The top stories tonight in Y News. The Philippines secures 2.6 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines after signing a deal with British pharmaceutical company AstraZeneca. The COVID-19 task force has permitted the entry of Filipino citizens, foreign spouses and children into the country starting next month. Senators call for localized face-to-face -face classes in low COVID-19 risk areas. The Department of Agriculture releases a new list of suggested retail price for basic agriculture products sold in Metro Manila wet markets. Quezon City Court convicts National Democratic Front consultants Benito and Wilma Tiamzon for the kidnapping and serious illegal detention of military officers in 1988. And a UN TV exclusive. Nine policemen accused of killing four military intelligence operatives in Holosulu found guilty of administrative charges. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Friday, November 27, 2020. I'm Angelo Castro III. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the country and in other parts of the world. I am William Theo. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts and our website, untvweb.com. I am Maria Latoza. First in the news, the Philippine government has signed a tripartite agreement for 2.6 million doses of COVID-19 vaccine from AstraZeneca through private sector donations. More than 1 million Filipinos will benefit from the vaccines expected to arrive in May or June of 2021. According to National Task Force Against COVID-19 Chief Implementer and Vaccine Czar Carlito Galvez, the government will keep on negotiating with other vaccine developers. He adds, the agreement signed today is important to assure a to assure vaccine supply next year. Half of the 2.6 million doses will be donated to the government for the frontliners along with the poor and vulnerable community, while the other half will be utilized by the private sector for their frontliners. Two clinical trials for COVID-19 vaccines may begin in the country by December, according to an official from the Department of Science and Technology, or DOST. Meanwhile, the clinical trial of Britain's AstraZeneca in the Philippines will still continue despite complex manufacturing issues. Aiko Miguel explains why. China's Clover Biopharmaceuticals' application to conduct a clinical trial in the country has been forwarded to the Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, for regulatory evaluation. It was in October 10 when the Vaccine Expert Panel completed their review of China's Sinovac Biotech's application. According to Dr. Jaime Montoya, once the FDA completes their review, the clinical trial of China's two potential vaccines may start before 2020 ends. So we expect na kung uh, dire-diretso po halimbawa ang Sinovac at ang uh, Clover, uh, we foresee na baka magsimula na at the earliest ang uh, uh, clinical trial uh, baka late December or early January. Meanwhile, AstraZeneca is one of the five vaccine manufacturers that submitted their intent to conduct a phase three clinical trial in the country. According to Dr. Montoya, their plan to conduct a trial in the Philippines will continue amid reported manufacturing error on dosing regimen of their potential vaccine. Based on the report, AstraZeneca vaccine didn't have the right concentration, so some volunteers only got a half dose. According to AstraZeneca, they have already addressed the problem. With regards to the um, uh, evaluation of the AstraZeneca vaccine and the errors have been published by the press, you know, we have no way of verifying it until they submit their official documents, which we will have to verify based on the data they will present. 
The DOH is also focusing their negotiation with AstraZeneca. We need to be officially informed by, by the manufacturer because they have that responsibility because they were able to submit already their application uh, to the country. Also, we have ongoing negotiations with them. So it is but right that they are uh, responsible to provide us with that uh, adequate information as to these uh, allegations regarding their studies. But I agree with Dr. Jimmy Montoya that these are all numbers. No, These are actually numbers, No, but they were able to really uh, implement uh, their trial and uh, the results were there. According to Dr. Montoya, AstraZeneca intends to submit their emergency use authorization in the Philippines once President Duterte issues an executive order to the Food and Drug Administration for the process of emergency use authorization application. It will take 21 days for a potential vaccine to get an approval for a limited use even trials are still ongoing. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. AstraZeneca Chief Executive Pascal Soriad said on Thursday that the company will likely run an additional global trial to assess the efficacy of its COVID-19 vaccine using a lower dosage amidst queries about the results from its late-stage study. According to uh, the CEO, AstraZeneca might launch a fresh study to evaluate a more minimal dosage of its vaccine that performed better than a full dosage. He also added that it would probably be another international study, but this one could be faster because they know the efficacy is high and they would need a smaller number of patients. Earlier on Thursday, AstraZeneca announced that the administering of the half dose had been reviewed and approved by independent data, safety monitors, and the UK regulator. However, clearance from the United States Food and Drug Administration may take longer as the agency is unlikely to approve the vaccine based on studies carried out elsewhere. In the coming weeks, a peer-reviewed analysis of the trial data will be published in a medical journal. The government has allowed the entry of Filipino citizens, foreign spouses and children in the country starting December 7, 2020. But their entry will still be subjected to the maximum capacity of inbound passengers at the port and date of their arrival. Rosa Licos explains why. The Interagency Task Force Against COVID-19 Resolution No. 85, signed November 27, 2020, allows foreign spouses and children of Filipinos to enter the Philippines as well as former Filipino citizens and their family regardless of age. This as the government gradually relaxes travel restrictions amid the COVID-19 pandemic. The resolution is effective December 7, 2020, subject to various conditions. Travelers are required to have a pre-booked quarantine facility and a pre-booked COVID-19 testing at a laboratory operating at the airport and subject to the maximum capacity of inbound passengers at the port and date of entry. The IATF directs the Bureau of Immigration to create the regulations to ensure smooth implementation of the policy while the Department of Tourism will have to issue the guidelines for the provision of sufficient accommodation. Tourism Secretary Bernadette Puyat welcomes the recent resolution of the IATF and hopes that this will drive visitors to the Philippines. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Several senators expressed their support to allow localized face-to-face -face classes in areas with low transmission of COVID-19. However, according to the Department of Education, they are still finalizing their recommendation to President Rodrigo Duterte to reintroduce the method of learning. Harleen Delgado will tell us why. Schools and communities where COVID-19 transmission has been stabilized should be allowed to reopen as soon as possible. This was the call of Senator Amy Marcus in today's Senate hearing on updates on class opening. For Marcus, educators can work safely in schools, and schools can be the safest place for children in a pandemic. She added that some parents, especially those who are working, are now getting overwhelmed in teaching their children under the distance learning. Talagang nadismaya ako na mas mahalaga pa pala ang sabong sa Pilipino kesa sa edukasyon. 
uh, dalawang uh, linggong nakalipas, binuksan na ang sabungan. Pero ang eskwela, sarado pa rin. Hindi naman yata tama. Pigyan naman natin ng kahalagahan ang ating edukasyon. Alam naman natin na hindi super spreader ang mga eskwelahan. Senator Nancy Binay echoed the same sentiment, citing that students can even go out nowadays. For Senate Committee on Basic Education Chairperson Sherwin Gatalian, the COVID-19 situation in the country has changed tremendously. Gatalian believes now is the time to consider limited localized face-to-face -face classes in areas that are COVID-19 free. I have consulted with our mayors in um, uh, the Barm area. They are quite um, worried because the feedback they are getting is a lot of our parents uh, didn't even finish elementary or high school. So they don't have that confidence of uh, teaching their children at home. According to Deped Undersecretary Nepomuceno Malaluan, the department is also gearing towards reintroducing face-to-face -face classes. Education Secretary Leonor Briones is finalizing the department's recommendation to President Rodrigo Duterte. They are looking into possible resumption of physical classes in areas under Modified General Community Quarantine or MGCQ, those that will transition to the new normal and in remote areas. According to Yusek Malaluan, the reintroduction of face-to-face -face classes is crucial in the learning process. The teacher's presence uh, to provide for instructional guidance and formative assessment of students uh, cannot be replaced by uh, fully replaced by distance learning uh, uh, method, especially for uh, young children. The social aspect of learning uh, together face-to-face uh, with the teacher and among the classmates is still very important in this uh, highly social uh, activity. The department is also considering the health and safety management, such as protocols and coordination in case of infection and exposure. It's very important that there is an understanding of a shared responsibility when we get to reintroduce the face-to-face, -face, that there is a strong agreement and unity with the local government that this is something that we need to do. Uh, the parents should also be aware of the risks uh, involved. Zepan clarifies that only President Duterte can decide whether or not face-to-face -face classes will resume. Jorge Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Department of Health recorded 1,631 new COVID-19 infections today, bringing the country's caseload to 425,918. The DOH noted that 91% of the nationwide tally has already recovered or 387,616 survivors. There were 317 new recoveries recorded today. However, there were 46 new fatalities, raising the death toll to 8,255, which represents 1.94% of total caseload. The total number of active cases in the country is 30,047. Quezon City logged the most number of new cases with 116, followed by Rizal with 101, Davao City with 95, Laguna with 89, and Manila with 65. For those watching us on YouTube, please click the subscribe button you see on the right side of your screen and ring the bell for notification. You may also follow us on Facebook. The Philippine National Police Internal Affairs Service has found nine cops involved in the shooting incident in Holosulu last June 29, guilty of the administrative charges that were filed against them. PNP IAS Inspector General Attorney Alfegar Triambulo said they will now recommend the dismissal of the policemen to the PNP chief. Lea Ilagan filed this exclusive report. After filing an administrative case against the nine policemen in Hulu who were accused of killing the four military intelligence operatives on June 29, the PNP Internal Affairs Service confirmed to the UNTV News they have found the accused men guilty of the said charges. With this, 
The EAS is now recommending to PNP Chief Police General Debold Sinas the immediate dismissal from the service of the nine cops as their maximum penalty. Dismissal from the service because uh, serious po yung offense committed. Uh, there are four counts of grave misconduct kasi apat po yung victim sa pamamaril nila. And then yung victim ayon sa mga ebisensya ay uh, matas na yung kamay at saka yung mga tama na tagligod. Kaya wala silang uh, chance to defend themselves. So, kaya ang, ano, ang criminal offense no, is murder. The PNP has imposed a 50-day suspension for the three policemen who were manning the checkpoint in the area where the four soldiers have been flagged down. Doon inaapangan ng mga siyam yung uh, apat na victim. Yun ang katalanan nila. Bakit nila inalaw na makikialam yung mga mga junior officer na hindi katama sa pagtanap ng checkpoint. Eh. Hindi nagkakaroon ng sagutan, nagkainitan na, nakabuhol po na ng traffic. At saka wala silang ano, intervention. Mm -mm. So dahil nakainitan na sana yung grupo kasi sa tingin nung siya may sila'y sinusurbilan. The late former Holo Chief of Police, Police Lieutenant Colonel Walter Anayo and Police Captain Ariel Corsino were also suspended for 40 days for command responsibility and less grave neglect of duty. Attorney Triambolo adds Anayo is well informed about the Army's operation in the area because he was present in the meetings of the Task Force Hulo on how to capture the two suicide bombers. Hindi naman niya to dininay sa statement ni Colonel Bautista at saka yung uh, inulit ni Colonel Bautista during Senate hearing presided by uh, Senator Bato na talagang nandoon siya at pinagsabihan siya. So ngayon, hindi niya ito nirelease sa mga tauhan niya. Kaya yung mga tauhan niya na treated doon sa movement ng mga intelligence officer thinking na sila so yung pinatrabaho. Anayo has been killed by still unidentified suspect in Maguindanao last November 21. Triambolo confirms that they already sent their recommendation to dismiss the nine policemen to the Directorate for Personnel and Records Management or DPRM to give to the Chief PNP. But Triambolo explains that the Chief PNP has still the last say on the matter. If General Debold Sinas is in favor of their recommendation, the nine policemen have the right to appeal to the National Police Commission or NAPOLCOM. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Meanwhile, a Quezon City court convicted National Democratic Front peace consultants Benito and Wilma Tiamson for the kidnapping and serious illegal detention of military officers in 1988. Dante Amento will tell us why live. Yes, uh, Dante, good evening. Yes, uh, William, guilty beyond reasonable doubt. This is the verdict of the Quezon City Regional Trial Court, Branch 216, for National Democratic Front Peace Consultants Benito and Wilma Tiamson for the crime of kidnapping with serious illegal detention of military officers in the province of Quezon. The court sentenced the Tiamson couple to reclusion perpetua or up to 40 years of imprisonment. The Tiamson couple are also ordered to pay 75,000 pesos as moral damages, 75,000 pesos as civil indemnity, and 75,000 pesos as exemplary damages to complainant Lieutenant Claro Casis. The case stemmed from uh, the kidnapping of Army Lieutenants Clarito Santos, Oscar Simpson, Romel Salamanca, and Abraham Claro Casis of the Armed Forces of the Philippines and of Sergeant John Jacob of the Philippine Narcotics Command in Quezon Province on June 1, 1988. Based on the information or charge sheet filed on June 26, 1990, those kidnapped were kept under restraint for 75 days in Mauban, Quezon. The Tiamson couple were freed in 2016 after the Manila court allowed them to post bail to participate in peace talks between the communist rebels and the government, but President Rodrigo Duterte scrapped formal and back-channel negotiations in 2017. The court is, uh, in 2018, ordered the re-arrest of the Tiamson. The Tiamson have failed 
to appear since the Manila court ordered their rearrest and their right to present evidence in the kidnapping case has since been waived. The case was submitted for resolution based only on prosecution evidence. Many have welcomed the court's decision and expressed happiness and victory. According to presidential spokesperson Harry Roque, the decision of the court is clearly a triumph of the justice system. The Department of Justice and the Philippine National Police expressed the same sentiment. Armed Forces of the Philippines or AFP spokesperson Marine Major General Edgar Arevalo said the court's decision is a victory for the many victims of the atrocities of the NPA, particularly the orders to conduct murder, arson, extortion, ambushes, bombing, and other activities they orchestrated. In or interior, Secretary Eduardo Año said he was very happy with the conviction of the Tiamson couple. He said his efforts to track down the Tiamson or the Tiamson started when he was just a military captain. Meanwhile, Edri Ulalia, the couple's counsel and the president of the National Union of People's Lawyers, slammed the allegedly politically motivated persecution. And that's the latest live. Back to you, William. Thank you, uh, Dante Amento, for that live report. Criminal charges were already filed against several, several individuals who participated in a Halloween party in Boracay Island in Malay Aklan on October 31. The Tourism Department, meanwhile, has condemned the party, saying such irresponsible action compromises efforts to revive the tourism industry. Asher Kadapan Jr. reports. Malaya clan mayor Felibar Bautista confirms that three ordinances were violated by individuals involved in the Halloween party event in a private establishment in Boracay Island on November 31. The violations are related to the implementation of health and safety protocols against COVID-19 pandemic. Authorities impose a fine of 2,500 pesos for every ordinance violated. But criminal charges were also filed against two foreign nationals who wore police uniform in the said mass gathering. Gathering. Mayor Bautista explained that authorities didn't immediately notice the event as the venue was far from the beach area of Boracay. Yung bahay na yan, mayari pala is foreigner. Uh -huh. So pinarintahan niya dito sa Boracay at yun na, dahil sabi daw na yun nagnagrinta ng bahay na yan na may parang may birthday party. Uh -huh. Sinabahin na pala sa euro na sa, ano, sa Halloween, kaya gano'n nangyari. The Department of Tourism, on the other hand, supports the recommendation of the Boracay Interagency Rehabilitation Management Group to close down the airing establishment. Tourism Secretary Bernadette Romulo Puyat slams what she dubs as irresponsible mass gathering, which puts the jobs and livelihoods of locals of Boracay at stake once another outbreak occurs. Secretary Romulo Puyat appeals to local government units to cooperate in providing a safe and responsible reopening of tourist destinations. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. As shoppers are flocking to the malls for the holiday season, San Juan City Mayor Francis Zamora has a warning to shut down market stalls in Green Hills Mall and other establishments if they will fail to enforce health protocols. Vincent Arboleda will tell us why. Night markets and tiangues are one of the most frequented areas by shoppers during holiday season. But due to the threat of COVID-19, the minimum health and safety protocols must still be observed to avoid the spread of the disease. That is why the local government of San Juan conducted an inspection of tiangues stalls at Green Hills Mall to see if these protocols are being followed. Arriving at the entrance, an automatic thermal scanner and alcohol dispenser is installed. Temperatures of anyone entering the mall will be checked and will also serve as an initial disinfection area. While going around the area, a barrier can be seen on every stall where their permit is displayed. Every stall also has an alcohol dispenser for customers' use. Stall owners also wear their health and safety ID as proof that they have no symptom of COVID-19. Safety protocol officers also roam the area to further remind the public on physical distancing and to strictly implement the physical distancing, a directional pattern were placed on the walkways to serve as guide. 
According to San Juan Mayor Francis Zamora, vendors who will be caught violating any of the health protocols will be dealt accordingly. Kung sila'y mahuli namin, we, we penalize them and uh, if uh, they go beyond yung uh, restrictions that the LG is giving, pwede natin silang ipasara. The mayor admitted that malls and stall owners are immensely affected by the pandemic and that they could only earn back their living this holiday season. Dati kasi, kailangan mo pumili. Is it the health and safety of people or the economy? Pero ngayon, you can do both. You can uh, revive the economy at the same time maintain the health and safety of everyone. Vincent Arboleda, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The management of Metro Rail Transit Line 3 or MRT 3 reminded the public that its operations will be suspended over the weekend to give way to scheduled rehabilitation and maintenance works. In an advisory, the MRT 3 said it will shut down operations from November 28 to 30 as part of the ongoing massive rehabilitation project being conducted by its maintenance provider, Sumitomo Mitsubishi Heavy Industry. A turnout or railroad switch is a mechanical installation enabling railway trains to be guided from one track to another railway junction. Last November 2, the MRT3 increased its train running speed to 50 km per hour from 40 km per hour. The rail management hopes to further increase the train speed up to 60 km per hour when repair works for turnouts will be completed in December. For those watching us on YouTube, please click the subscribe button you see on the right side of your screen and ring the bell for notification. You may also follow us on Facebook. The Department of Agriculture has issued a new list of suggested retail prices for basic agricultural commodities in the national capital region. But the SRP does not include products sold in supermarkets. John Nano will tell us why. A lot of consumers are now complaining over the price hike of basic agri-products such as vegetables and poultry meat sold in wet markets. That is why the Department of Agriculture has issued new sets of suggested retail prices for basic agricultural commodities that are being sold in Metro Manila wet markets. The updated SRP serves as a guide to retailers and consumers amid the zone-wide price freeze imposed due to the pandemic and the existing state of calamity in the region. Dahil ayaw din po natin na masyadong tumaas po ang preso dito sa NCR, naglabas po tayo ng SRP. And this is in line with the price fees po na ipinatutupad po dahil tayo po ay under state of calamity. Under the latest SRP, prices of beef should be sold at a range of 300 to 380 pesos per kilo, while pork should be at 260 to 290 pesos per kilo and 140 pesos for whole chicken. On the other hand, vegetables such as bitter gourd SRP should be sold at 120 pesos per kilo, string beans 100 pesos, snow cabbage 80, 30 pesos for squash, 70 pesos and cabbage, 130 pesos per kilo of bagu beans, 40 pesos for chayote, and 70 pesos for potato. Basic ingredients such as onions should be sold from 100 to 160 pesos per kilo, while each kilo of garlic is at 90 pesos, tomato 100 and ginger at 130 pesos per kilo. Meanwhile, most common fishes being cooked for viands such as milk fish is at 160 pesos each kilogram, 120 pesos for tilapia, 140 for round scanned or galunggong, and 250 pesos per kilo of alumahan. Despite the issuance of SRP, two major wet markets within Quezon City sells the agricultural commodities that are 10 to 30 pesos higher than the SRP. However, Agriculture Assistant Secretary Secretary Christine Evangelista Aquino says that it is still acceptable for the businessmen to add around 10% on top of the SRP. Under the law, businessmen who are caught taking advantage of the prices of basic goods and proven of negligence and non-compliance of Price Act will be subject to a penalty 
fee of not less than 5,000 pesos and not exceeding 2 million peso, and imprisonment from a minimum of 5 years and maximum of 15 years in jail. However, the agency appeals to all the stakeholders to work with them in order to normalize the prices of basic goods in the market. Makaasa po kayo ang Department of Agriculture kasama din po ang ating LGU ay patuloy na mag-iikot para bantayan ang presyo. Hindi po dahil gusto namin manghuli. Ang gusto po namin ay maayos lang po ang presyo sa ating mga pamilihang bayan. Sinaalam po namin sa ating mga tindera saan niyo po kinuha ang inyong, binibili, ang inyong binibenta para matulungan natin sila na makakuha sa mas murang supplier para sila po ay makabenta ng pasok sa SRP. According to DA, prices of pork are starting to reduce. However, prices of vegetables might stabilize next month. Johan Nano, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Australia's second largest state, once the country's COVID-19 hotspot, said on Friday it has gone 28 days without detecting any new infections, a benchmark widely cited as eliminating the virus from the community. Earl Briones will give us details live. Yes, early good evening. Marielle, Victoria's 28 days of consecutive wins have given a huge boost to people's morale, and most residents are now thanking Premier Daniel Andrews for the ring of steel that was put around the state for more than 100 days. Businesses in the state are slowly picking up the momentum, with the expectation of December holiday season will give them some cash boost after many months of suffering deficits. On Sunday last week, additional easing of restrictions were announced by Premier Daniel Andrews, where hospitality capacity has increased to 150 persons for larger venues and 50 for smaller ones. Rules around the use of masks was also tweaked, and it is now only mandatory to wear indoors and while on public transport. However, not required for outdoors when physical distancing can be observed. Victoria accounts for 73% of total COVID-19 infections in Australia, recording 20,345 cases while 819 lives were lost in the state, out of the total country fatality of 907. As Victoria joins Australian Capital Territory, Western Australia, New South Wales and Tasmania with zero active COVID-19 cases, South Australia now becomes the only state left in the country with community transmission. Meanwhile, in the state budget passed this week, Premier Daniel Andrews has put a lot of emphasis on people's welfare, such as providing sick pay for casual workers. This pandemic has exposed the cracks in our society and our economy. Too many workers have had to choose between going to work sick and feeding their family. It's why we'll take the first steps toward doing what no other government has done delivering five days of sick pay for casual workers in the most vulnerable industries, protecting them and all of us. $150 million has been allocated specifically as a wage subsidy to support towards employing women, and an unprecedented budget of $1 billion has been allocated to the skills sector to include the creation of 80,000 free training modules to upskill workers with clear link to those jobs in demand. The Andrews government aims to creating 200,000 jobs by 2022 and reaching 400,000 jobs by 2025. Marielle? All right, thank you, Early Briones, reporting live from Australia. Meanwhile, the Walt Disney Company has increased the number of employees it will lay off to 32,000. Marvi Delphine will tell us why live. Yes, Marvi, good evening. Marielle, the Walt Disney Company sheds 4,000 more jobs, adding to the 28,000 headcount reduction already announced in September after coronavirus lockdowns forced the closing of its theme parks. This move takes the number of layoffs in the first half of 2021 to 32,000, which is more than a tenth of its total workforce. Disney Parks Chairman Josh Diamaro said in a statement that as difficult as this decision is, we believe that the steps we are taking will enable us to emerge a more effective and
and efficient operation when we return to normal. He also said, we've cut expenses, suspended capital projects, furloughed our cast members while still paying benefits, and modified our operations to run as efficiently as possible. However, we simply cannot responsibly stay fully staffed while operating at such limited capacity. Quarterly financial results earlier this month revealed how the COVID-19 pandemic has hammered Disney's main businesses like studios, parks, and cruises, while accelerating a pivot to online streaming. The theme parks showed a loss of 1.1 billion US dollars, but was compensated by the surging growth in its on-demand video platform Disney Plus, which smashed subscriber number estimates. All of the Disney theme parks across the world were closed between March and May, as countries grappled with the threat of COVID-19 spreading in public spaces. Disney's theme parks in Florida and those outside the United States then reopened earlier this year, without seeing new major COVID-19 outbreaks, but with strict physical distancing, testing, and mask use. However, attractions in California, which include the flagship theme park Disneyland, will stay closed for the remainder of 2020, due to uncertainty over when the state would allow parks to reopen. While late last month, Disneyland Paris was forced to close again when France imposed a second nationwide lockdown to fight their second wave of coronavirus cases. The company's theme parks in Hong Kong, Shanghai, and Tokyo remain open. Muriel? All right, Marvi, thank you for that live report. Hong Kong's hospital authorities apologized for a technical mix-up which sent false negative results via SMS to individuals who had actually tested positive for the coronavirus. Mavian Dog tells us why live. Yes, Maeve, go ahead. Muriel, incorrect test results have been sent to 2,872 Hong Kong residents yesterday, not only exposing individuals' test results to other participants, but also mixed up the results of six people receiving false negative outcomes of their positive COVID-19 test. The SMS functionality, said to be managed by a government contractor, has reported to have made an error when the system swapped personal records stored in the database. The vendor uh, has informed HA that um, there were a discrepancy of personal information sent uh, in the SMS of informing negative result to the participants. Um, there were total 2,972 participants involved in this incident, and among them, there were six positive cases. Uh, for those six uh, positive cases, uh, we handled the cases under the uh, usual mechanism that uh, we in, uh, contact the patient to be admitted. So there was no delay in uh, arranging patient care for these six confirmed cases. According to Dr. Yu, the contractor has now corrected the information and sent the correct messages to the involved participants. The six positive patients, meanwhile, have since been contacted and have been placed under isolation treatment. Authorities added that none of the six had unduly stayed in the community. The Health Authority of Hong Kong has expressed great disappointment on what has happened and is very concerned, urging the contractor to immediately review its processes and its systems to avoid such case from happening again. And we are very concerned about the incident and we have reported the, to the CHP and also the Office of the Privacy Commissioner of Personal Data and we have requested the vendor to review the system and also to fix the error to prevent similar incidents from occurrence. Hong Kong has reported 81 new cases as of Thursday and recorded 5,948 cases with 108 deaths since the pandemic began. Restrictions have been put in place since last night to shut all pubs, nightclubs and bathhouses for seven days. Back to you, Marielle. That is a Mavian Dog reporting live from Australia. For those watching us on YouTube, please click the subscribe button you see on the right side of your screen and ring the bell for notification. You may also follow us on Facebook. 
As more people are preparing for the holiday season despite the pandemic, experts warn that the festivities could take a toll in one's health and could lead to a holiday heart attack. Ray Pelayo will tell us why. Watch what you eat. This is what lifestyle and nutrition expert Dr. Dex Makalintal would advise the public for the holiday season. Makalintal emphasized that overindulging in fatty and sweet foods could lead to cardiovascular disease like a heart attack. A decrease in physical activity and emotional stress are also factors. No, nakita po sa mga pag-aaral na sa epidemiology side, marami po yung inaatake sa puso sa panahon ng mga December to January dahil sa mga kinakain natin. Uh, nakita na yan, wala nang, wala, nang, wala nang rason para hindi tayo mag-ingat. Dr. Makalintal advises especially the elderly to frequently monitor their blood pressure. The expert also cites other signs that may lead to a stroke. Maaring yung sakit sa dibdib ay parang may nakadagan. Dito po sa inyong left side ng arm, sa, sa inner side ng left ng sa either side ng left arm ninyo ay maaari po namamanhid pati po ang inyong left jaw. Kapag ka po ganyan yung atake, kapag ka po ganyan yung sakit, no, pumunta po kayo agad sa emergency room at magpatingin po sa doktor. Dahil baka atake sa puso yan para po maagapan. Dr. Makalintal suggests to have a regular exercise even indoors or inside your homes. This year, with increased anxiety around, celebrating safely and other pandemic-related concerns, the nutrition expert suggests that families could resort to social media gathering to avoid exposure of COVID-19. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. And uh, those are the reasons behind the news, November 27, 2020. Setting in for Harleen Delgado, I am Mariela Toza, live from Perth, Australia. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold, Mangalo Castro III. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo, we serve the people, we give glory to God.